everybody. We are back with another video. Uh, so the other day we talked about equation solving with fractions and we saw some problems like this where we just had to deal with one fraction. So we attack these kinds of problems the way we've done all of our other ones where we want to get this variable term alone. So the way we do that is we get rid of whatever is happening to it. So we subtract 10 from both sides. So then we're left with one half x equaling 40. And at this point, I want you to pause the video and go ahead and solve the sucker. All right, so you're back. Hopefully you solved it. And uh, let's just talk this out. So if I know I have one half of x equals 40, well, if I think about it, I've got half of a number equals 40. So I know that number has to be 80. But let's just confirm that by going through um, with our algorithm. So we know that we can always multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, so by 2 over 1. So if I multiply the left-hand side by 2 over 1, I'm left with just 1x. And then I also have to multiply the other side by 2 over 1. And so I'm left with x equals 80. Woohoo! Got it right. Amazing. So we know how to tackle these kinds of problems, which is fantastic. But what if my problem looks like this? Yikes. So I have a lot of fractions here. So if we approach this the way we did the previous one, well, we know that we need to get this variable term alone, right? So just the way we did before on the previous problem. So then I would subtract one half from both sides. Oh God, this looks terrible. I'm gonna have to do two fifths minus a half. I mean, I could totally do it. I'm very smart. I could totally do it, but why, right? So. There is a way that we can do this much more efficiently. And it is called clearing fractions. So here's the same problem that I showed you before. And what you're gonna do in order to clear the fractions here, and that means get rid of them, is we're gonna look at all of the denominators. And we're gonna multiply through by something called the least common multiple, the LCM of these denominators. So the least common multiple or the L C M is whenever we have numbers and we try to find the least common multiple is we can list the multiples of that number. So like four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, and then 16, and then 20, and then 24, boom, 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 right? Just keeps going. So then same thing for two. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, ba, 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 ba. good. And then for five, I have five, five times two is 10, five times three is 15, five times four is 20, ba, 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 ba. cool. Now it looks like if I'm looking for the least common, that C means common, it's the one they have in common. So hmm, if I'm looking at these, Ooh, these both, four and two, both have fours, but shoot, five doesn't have a four. Um, okay, ooh, two and four both have 12s, but shoot, five doesn't have a 12. Um, oh, four and five both have 20s, but does two have a 20? It does, I just didn't continue. So I have 16, I have 18, and then I have 20. So two times 10 is 20. So we would consider 20 the least common multiple between these three numbers. So what you do, if I go back to that original problem, I first wanna find the least common multiple between these three numbers, and then look what happens. I multiply through by that least common multiple by 20 over one, and that's it. So I'm gonna multiply everything by 20 over one. So let's do it out. 20 times three is 60. One times four is four. I've got my X there, great. And then plus 20 times one is 20. And one times two is two. And then my last one, 20 times two is 40. And one times five is just five. Shoot, I still have fractions here. Or do I? I actually don't because we haven't simplified this yet. What's 60 divided by 4? Aha, 15. What's 20 divided by 2? 10. And what's 40 divided by 5? 8. 
Ba -ba -da -ba. Does this look like an equation we know how to solve? It does. This is a two-step equation. And so because there are no fractions here, we can just go through with our normal two-step equation process. So we would subtract 10 from both sides, and then we would get 15x equals negative 2. And then we would divide both sides by 15. And we get that x equals negative 2 over 15. And you're done. Don't worry, we'll do some more. Let's go to the next problem. Let's say I have a problem that looks like this. So I see multiple fractions. I don't see over here, though, a fraction. Technically, though, though, this is 5 over 1. So let's look first at our denominators. And we're going to think about the least common multiple between 2, 3, and 1. So if we were to list out the multiples of 2, list out the multiples of 3, and then list out the multiples of 1, what would be the least common multiple? So go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to figure out what that is. All right, did you say six? If you did, you're correct. Woo -woo! So I'm going to multiply through by six over one, and then just go ahead, and you are going to multiply everything by that six over one. So here we go. Six times x, well, that's easy. That's just six x. What's one times two? Dos. All right, you didn't know you were getting a little Spanish lesson in here. Six times one is six, and then one times three is three. Six times five is 30, and then one times one is one. And shoot, it looks like I still have fractions in here. But do I? I don't, we have to simplify. So look what we've got, six X over two is just three X. I have to complete my three there. Um, six over three is two, and then 30 over 1 is 30. Woohoo! And then you've got a little two stepper here and you can solve. How cool is that? All right, let's go on to the next problem. Oh, I just want to make sure that you know that 6x over 2 and 6 over 2 times x, they are the same thing. So if we were to plug in x equals 3 here, we would do 6 times 3 over 2. So 6 times 3 is 18. 18 over 2 is 9. But if we did 6 over 2 times 3, well, what's 6 over 2? 3. What's 3 times 3? 9. Awesome. So it doesn't matter where that x is. Um, having it sort of be right next to this 6 over 2 is the same thing as 6x over 2. Okay, that was just a little side note. All right, so let's try this one. I'm going to pause the video, and I want you to first tell me what the least common multiple is between 2, 5, and 4. All right, so hopefully you said 20. This is the exact same numbers that we saw before. So if we multiply through by 20, look what we get. 20x over 2 plus 40 over 5 equals 100 over Four. So 20x over 2 is 10x, 40 over 5 is 8, and 100 over 4 is 25. And then you would solve, solve, solve. So you'd subtract 8 from both sides and then divide by 10. Those same problems that we've seen before. All right, last one of this video. So if you look at this, I want you to pause this video first and I want you to tell me what the least common multiple is. All right, so hopefully you looked at five and three, five and three, five and three, and that least common multiple is 15. So we're gonna multiply through by 15. Pause the video again, and I want you to first multiply through by 15 over one times everything, and write that equation down. All right, so we're back, let's do this out. I get 15x over five minus 15 over three equals 45 over five, and then plus 15 X over three. And shoot, it looks like I still have fractions, or do I? Okay, so if we simplify this guy up, look what we get. 
15 over 5 is just 3x. 15 over 3 is 5. 45 over 5 is 9. And 15 over 3 is 5x. We have a nice little three-step right here. Three-step equation. I'm going to scooch this guy. Whoop! I lost you. I lost you. There we are. We're back. So, um, all right, there we are. So for a three-step equation, remember, we want to combine our variable terms first. So let's scooch this 5x over here. So if I do minus 5x, minus 5x, I'm left with negative 2x minus 5 equals 9. And then I can add 5 to both sides, add 5 to both sides. And then I wind up with negative 2x equals 14. And then if I divide both sides by negative 2, I ran out of space, sorry. I get x equals negative 7. Cool? All right, so go ahead and try the next worksheet. You're going to crush it. Um, and then Mr. Long and I will see you and we will answer any questions you have. Thanks so much.